chemistry we will see two variations or two ways to solve this problem the problem is simple and just exactly what it says that we are given the root of a binary tree and we have to determine if it's a valid binary search tree or not now we will see if you don't know we will see what a binary search tree means but we just have to validate if it's actually a binary search tree or not now uh, it just defines what is a val valid binary search tree a valid binary search tree is something the left subtree of the node contains only the nodes with the keys less than the node key again remember if i have the node so left subtree of that specific node will contain the keys which is less than that of this specific key and the same way the right subtree will contain the keys which is more than that of that specific key again remember it is not more than equal to it is actually more both the left and right subtrees must also be a binary search tree which means it is kind of inferring us that okay this condition you applied on the first node apply the same condition on the left subtree and also on the right subtree which means for sure the problem itself asks us to apply recursion now if we simply go and look and see what the problem was saying problem was simply saying that if i have this specific node all the nodes on the left portion should be smaller than me and all the nodes on the right portion should be larger than me and the same thing should happen for this node also for this node all the nodes on the left should be smaller than him and all the nodes on the right should be larger than him so we have to basically limit as in see again if you just go back if 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 you were at 12 so you will say all the nodes on the left should be less than 12 which means i have for short put a condition on all the nodes that okay my number this should be less than 12 it should be also less than 12 it should be also, le also less than 12 but i have i can also put a condition okay for this number he can be anything right so but when he will say okay you are on the left of me so you should be less than six you should be less than six when he will go right then he will say okay you should be more than six so i should be more than six so you can see easily that i am kind of putting every number in a range so i can start off with a very basic range okay for the first root element i have the infinite range minus infinity to plus infinity now um for actual nodes uh, you can say this as a null which means if something has infinite limit since you can see okay nothing is on the left nothing is on the right and you can also refer as null both ways you can also mark it as integer or you can as null but for understanding let's understand both of them so we'll understand with integers itself so what will happen okay this number has a limit of minus infinity plus infinity which means which means he will say that okay i am completely fine again i have to validate that is this number 12 between minus infinity plus infinity yeah it is then he will go on the left portion for the left portion all the notes on the left portion should be less than my this specific 12 so i know okay this number should be less than 12 this number should be less than 12 this number should be less than 12 but i didn't hear it is you have not written any, anything yeah because i will just put this number only this number as less than 12 are in why not other numbers because other numbers will propagate from 6 not from 12 so 6 will handle that case how let's see so now we have seen okay for for 6 i had condition that it should be more than minus infinity and less than 12 so now 6 will propagate the same thing to its left and right when 6 propagate to its left he will say 3 should be less than my 6 and this next number on the right should be more than my six okay more than my six and but he will he, he will also propagate its upper limit okay bro i as a six was even less than 12 and the parent is inferring that you should be less than 12 so you should also be less than 12 so i will be less than 12 so it is kind of i am inferring or i am giving in my parent value as you can see for my for three also his parent he got its left value from his parent itself minus infinity and you can see it got from here itself minus infinity he will get from here itself plus infinity so kind of we can infer that we are getting the value from the parent and if i can modify as a node i can modify the value from my parent and then propagate value well value to, to my child then i can modify that as you can see that for propagating this number 12 although he could have propagated that but he is going on the left so rather than propagating the parent's value he will propagate his own value because 
he is less than his parent so he just propagate that six and say bro you should be less than six and same way propagate that to a right and say you should be now more than six but less than the parent side which is 12 now the same way i can infer for the right subtree that okay which means every node on the right part should be more than 12 okay more than 12 but less than my infinity same way okay 15 which means node should be less than 15 but more than my 12 okay on the right same way it should be more than 15 but less than plus infinity so that's how i can simply propagate this value let's see and again uh, we just have to validate if we go and come here for the validation my number should have been more than 12 and less than 15 but the number is 10 which is not between this so for sure you can simply return a false because it is not it is not a valid binary search tree now rn how we will code this up exactly simple as we have put a limit right we just have put a limit values limit same way uh, as i told you that you either you can have actual number which is minus infinity and plus infinity or you can just imagine this as null null that's it like both are same right so my let's name my function as solve i will have to have to pass the root node right but i also remembered i will also have to pass the low and the high value corresponding to that specific node okay for that node right now my low and high are minus infinity and plus infinity and as i have uh, mentioned i will put them as null and null so as in the big beginning i have no limit so null represents no limit that's it because infinity what what infinity represents no limit that's the reason i have replaced that by null now the simple base case you can also modify the basis accordingly but the simple base case if something is null then simply return a true although i'll never recommend putting a base case first always Put the main condition because the condition first and then come on to your base case considering how you will reach onto that base case so our uh, let's 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 come on to the main case so one thing is for sure when will it be false which means when the bind search tree will not be valid only when only when let's say you have the root node and your low value which means low value is actually more than or equal to your root because actually to be to, for it to be valid your low should be less than the root but if it is more or equal than the root it is invalid and same way if your high is less or equal than the root it is invalid so okay when the low is not null which means low is not a infinity or minus infinity and your root is less than equal to your lo low or your right is not equal to null which means right is actually a valid value which means not infinity and your root is more than equal to your right then please return a false because it is not a valid hence like if this is not the case which means it is valid if it is valid then go and try for their subtree for the corresponding subtree so i go and solve for the right subtree with giving root as the left value and high as the right value and same way for the i'll solve for the left subtree with giving low as the left value and root as the right value and that's how you can simply go and solve it again if you will see and trace back the specific path what you will see is ultimately you will go and try null 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 ultimately this will go and land on to okay your root right because here you are not putting any condition root right is null or not so ultimately you will reach on to a value when when your root actually is a null right root right is a null so ultimately when something is null you don't have to check for either left or right because null has no left or right that's it and you simply return a true at this point so for sure you can easily see the code will look exactly same as we have seen in the handwritten uh, we will simply call the validate with the root and left and right both are null right now we will simply have this base case and if something is null simply return the true because it will not impact us if my low is not null which means low has some value and value root value is more less than equal to my low it is invalid or or my high is not equal to null and my root value is more than equal to high it's 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 invalid so simply return a false else go and try for the right go and try for the left and if both are true and if both are true only then return a true so that's so that's how you can simply see you're iterating on all the nodes of the tree that season time is o of n space is also o of n because although you cannot see any space used but you're using a recursive stack and in worst case when everything is screwed up skewed then uh, you will actually take o of n time 
So that's the reason, sorry, O of N space. So, so that's the reason space is O of N. Now, this is one way, but the interviewer can be a bit mm, out of, uh, and he might ask you some other way also to solve it. So again, it's also beneficial for you to, to solve in other way. We can solve it by simply saying, because a binary search tree, just a simple, simple fact, a binary search tree, a valid binary search tree, if I do an in order traversal of that binary search tree, then it will be a sorted array. Now, if you don't know what in order traversal is, just write on YouTube binary tree in order traversal by R. Mittal. You will get this video, just watch this video. And for a compliment, you can also watch this video, which means binary tree from there in order and post order traversal. Again, this is mandatory, this is complementary. Now, again, if you have even a basic idea of what an in-order traversal is, let's see that how we can actually use it to determine if a tree is a binary search tree or not, or if it's a valid binary search tree or not. Now, simply, as we can see that what is an in-order? In-order is you have a left, you have a root, and then you have a right. This is how you actually make an in-order traversal. For sure, if I just plot the exact same, so 12 will be the root, okay? Left will be in the entire left portion, okay? But still, it's a tree. So I have to again bifurcate that. So root will come, okay, root will come. Then the left will come, then the left will come, the right will come, the right will come. Same way for the right. Root will come, root will come, left will come, left will come, right will come, right will come. And that was entirely on the right part and that was entirely on the left part. So that's how you can see that if you convert your actual binary search tree again, if you convert your actual binary search tree again, this is not a valid binary search tree if you remembered because it was a node not more than 12. Let's say if it would have been 13. So if it would have been 13. So if this was a valid binary search tree, then your entire in order traversal would have been sorted. And that's very obvious. So we can use this exact same funda to figure out if this is a valid binary search tree or not. How? If I just give you a simple list and I ask you, is this list sorted or not? How do you compare? Okay, you will be at the i-th location. Then you can compare it with the i minus one location in a vector I'm saying. But Aryan, are you saying, so I will use this entire tree, convert that to an in-order vector and then iterate on it. Um, you can do it. Um, but you know that it will take O of n space and uh, can I optimize the space? Yeah, we can. So I'll use the exact, I'll still use the exact same funda. I I will be at i. Now, as I could have accessed i minus 1 if it would have been a vector, but right now it is just my imagination. It's a vector. It's actually a tree. So I cannot access i minus 1 directly. But I can say maybe I can go on to my previous. Maybe I can go on to my previous location. So let's name as a previous pointer. Let's say if I am at the current root, let's say if I am at the current node, so let's say, okay, it's a ith, ith pointer and I can maybe any way or figure out some way to point on to my previous vector. Then I can compare my a of i, which means your node, node i with the previous node and I actually should be sorted, which means, okay, my node of i should be more than that of my previous. If it is actually following in for every node, I can simply say it's a valid binary search tree. Now, here there are two things. We imagine that we will be able to figure out what is the previous. And we are saying that we will actually be applying my rule, this specific rule on my ith node. Let's, let's see, let's see. Okay, one question is how I will do this because it's a tree and I, I wanted not to make, not to convert my tree into a vector in order vector. I don't want to convert that. I want to because it will take extra space and I don't want to use the extra space. So interviewer has asked me not to use the extra space. So I will actually try to do it without extra space. But for that, I need to know that how in order code looks like. So if I just ask you simple in order code is generated by saying, bro, I ask you write an in order function. Now in the in order function, you will have firstly, a simple base case will always be there in any, any recursion. But the actual thing is you will call the recursive function for the left. You will apply some operation, maybe print that root node again. If I would have asked you, please, can you print this? So you would have printed the root node here itself. It's a, it's a, it's actually a process. Okay. Left, then root, then right. So go on to left, do some operation, do some action on the root, then go on the right go on the right. 
that's how a in order look like so now if I would have asked you print this, so you would have printed here. I would have asked you put this in a vector, so you would have pushed in a vector here. All the root nodes. But now here I am asking you apply this operation. Oh, root value is this value. Hmm. Previous value, let's imagine I would have. Previous value, let's imagine I would have in the beginning. So, I can easily compare in this step itself. My root value and my previous value. I can compare my root value and my previous value at this step itself of my in order traversal. And that's how I can simply solve it. Out, I mean, you imagine that you had a previous value. Okay, in the beginning, you, you can imagine that you have previous value because in the very beginning, your previous value will be nothing. Minus infinity. So you can imagine that. But how about you keep on going forward? Uh, that is the interesting part of in order comes in. As you will go on forward, you know that for sure the next node will be the just higher node. So before going on forward, bro, please simply assign your previous node to the node itself and that's how to simply make the movement by simply using the exact same in order code let's see the code it's pretty simple that we'll firstly go and ask the in order traversal of the root node simple base case exact same base case if the root is null return a true now actual simple in order traversal i'll go and do in order traversal of my left now this in order traversal re returns a boolean function if i do in order traversal of left and the left gives me a false then answer is false okay although 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 you can have expanded expanded this condition by saying firstly i'll do an in order traversal then if the answer comes as false i can simply return a false but i can write the same two line code into a one line code and say i'll simply call for the in order for left if that answer comes as false then simply return a false now okay left part is done apply operation on the main root node now if you remember the main root node was the thing that okay if i have a root node if i have a previous node so previous node should be less than my root node it is valid but if previous node is more than or equal to my root node it is invalid so if my previous node previous value if it is more than or equal to my root value it is invalid simply return a false but before comparing make sure that your previous is not null else you will get a null point exception because you are trying to access a null value which is not even there and as i've as i've told you before going on for the next iteration make sure you assign previous node to the current node so that because you know it is going on incrementally and ultimately go and return and go and try for the right portion by this you can simply return the in order and while traversing the in order you can actually go and check that time is o of n but Aryan, you were saying you will not convert that to a vector and that's why you were saving the space how is space still o of n because it's still a recursion and because of still being a recursion you will still again Aryan, why not you told the told us the uh, iterative method with that we have you like re re remove the space bro iterative also will have to use a stack that stack I mean either recursion or iteration both recursion will use recursive stack iterative will use actual stack or a vector still both needs to have a space so actually what you have done is you have optimized your time from 2 into n how 2 into n 1 n is for recursive stack and 1 n is would have been for your vector which you for sure for sure would be making but now you optimize that to just a o of n and again this o of n is just a worst case of recursive stack considering your entire entire binary like entire tree is actually skewed only then it's a worst case average case you can say it's actually log n but yeah in worst case it's actually o of n itself so that is how you can actually yeah, that's how you have actually optimized the space for sure cool and that's you can simply see these two variations of this problem cool. Bye -bye. Take care. let's see next video it's actually very great it's on fenwick trees bye bye